I'm sorry, I couldn't think of an intro for this video. So I'm just gonna show you how to create some simple meme effects for free in DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna walk through a few different effects, some video effects like the deep fried meme, audio effects like heavy distortion, and then some other things like shaky text and tracking. But let's start by getting deep fried. I have this clip here from a previous video I did. Please consider subscribing where I ask you to subscribe. And what we are going to do is with our playhead over our clip, we're gonna click this button to open the Fusion page. And here on the Fusion page, if you've never been here before, you'll see the very simple node tree that it starts you with. You have your media in, which represents your footage, and then you have a media out, which will send anything you do on the Fusion page back to the edit page. And in between them, you have this line where you can add any number of nodes to build your effect. So we're gonna start with this first node selected. We're gonna click shift space to pull up this search bar for all of our effects. And we're going to look for grain. We're gonna pull that up and then we're going to increase the power and increase the grain size all the way up. And you'll see that that just adds a lot of texture to the scene, starts to make it a little crunchy. We're gonna crunch it even more. I mean, out of that grain, again, shift space, we are going to type in mosaic to get this mosaic blur, this general pixelization effect. We're gonna pull that all the way up to 400. And then the real secret to this effect coming out of this mosaic blur, we're gonna look for color compressor. I'm gonna pull down green, I'm gonna pull down blue, and I'm gonna pull up hue almost all the way, maybe around three quarters. I pull up saturation and luminance, just a hair. And you'll see that really starts doing some funky stuff. And then finally, the last node we're gonna add is just a general color corrector node. And that is to pull up this contrast here to really push things over the edge. And then it's a balancing act between how you want these to function. And this is even a pretty simple scene, not a lot of dynamic color, but we can actually use this as an example to show off the power of nodes. If I hold this first MIDI in and hold shift, it will disconnect it from all of the nodes around it. I'll move it out of the way. And I pulled in some Halo gameplay footage here, this MIDI in three. And if I plug that into this yellow input on the grain, you'll see that it swaps out that source footage, but all the other effects apply just like they would. You'll see we have this really crunchy, highly saturated, honestly hard to see effect. But again, we can go in and pull back any of these controls to mess with this final effect. A really interesting one to watch is this hue. If you pull it up all the way, everything will be red. But if you pull it down just a little bit and you start introducing these other colors, that pushes it towards a really cool, a really cool effect in my opinion, at least. Next, let's talk about an audio effect that actually goes really good with the sort of harsh visual effect and that is heavy distortion. So I have this effect, I have it on this clip asking people to subscribe. Please consider subscribing. So actually we're gonna come down here to this little music note image and click that to open the Fairlight page. So here you'll see the unique layout of the scene. You have your video represented up in the corner, but the emphasis here is really on audio. So you'll see that for this clip, we're using our audio is on track number one. So we're gonna come over here to where you have your mixer here on the edit page. If you don't see it, you can toggle it on using this control up here. And we're gonna go to effects, click this little arrow, come down to harmonic and click distortion. We are going for that heavily distorted audio effect. But unfortunately, what a lot of editors do to achieve this effect is they just ramp up the volume so that when it's processing that track, it distorts it. And with this open, we're gonna come up here to where we have a few included presets and we're gonna to go to crunchy. And then the only other specific setting we're gonna change is we're gonna pull down this level to about negative 10 but that will make it unbearably loud for everyone listening. What we want to do is get the effect of the distortion without blowing out all of our viewers' eardrums. Then we can pull this out of the way, make sure we're at the beginning of our clip, and when we preview, please consider subscribing. You'll see that we have that crunchy distorted audio, but we aren't blowing out our speakers or our viewers' ears. And if you want, you can always bring this back up if you want to keep it in line with any other audio you have. Please consider subscribing. Thanks, I'll see you next time. You know what time it is? It's time for our new segment. I already have a video about that. Talking about meme effects, there is a super popular effect that is just a horizontal stretch on whatever clip. And I've created a free preset for that clip. You can drop it on any clip. And as long as that clip is, it'll automatically stretch out over the duration of our clip to achieve that classic meme horizontal stretch look. Link to that video will be in the description. Next, let's talk about simple tracked text. This is an effect that is all over the place, especially in gaming videos. So I'm gonna show you how to simply handle this effect inside Resolve. I'm gonna use this clip from just the opening cinematic to Outriders. And a quick note, I am using this clip because it is close to as perfect a test case 
as possible. This tracking method does work best in high contrast situations where the target you're tracking is very visually different from everything else around it. So I'm gonna track this little alien bird over here. And as you can see, it's darker. It pops out on this wider background scene. This is great for us. Your mileage may vary with this effect. So with this clip on our timeline, we're gonna open the fusion page. And with this first node selected, we are gonna press that shift space to pull up the select tool. We're gonna search for tracker, click add. And then if we zoom out on this viewer, which you can do by holding your middle mouse button and left mouse button and pulling back, you'll see this one tracker over here. And if you mouse over it, you'll see a few different things. You'll see this solid square, and then you'll see this dotted line square. The solid square you will place over the exact object you wanna search. And this dotted line square is how far outside of that solid square the tracker will look for that pattern in the next frame. So I'm gonna drag this tracker over, and it gives you this nice pop and zoom if you select this corner here. I'm gonna put it just over the head of this alien bird. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. And then here in the inspector, we have the controls for this tracker. I'm in the middle of this clip now. I've moved my tracker. So I'm going to come up to this button, which tracks forward. We'll click that and you'll see that tracker will just stick right on the head of this alien bird. That's render complete. But remember that was only tracking forward. So we're going to go back to that point and click this button to track backwards. And it'll do a pretty good job. But you'll notice, especially zoom in, we have this object path that there is a little bit where this wing actually flaps in front of the face and the track gets bumped a few frames. So we're gonna go forward frame by frame and you are able to grab the middle of this tracker and reposition it. And you'll see that this actually changes this path as well. So we are going to just even out this tracking line a little bit. There we go. And you can see even in that green line that it's quite a bit smoother now. If we play back, the tracker will just stick to that bird's head. And then what we can do is we can click this button to create a text node and bring it up here. I'm going to make this like a nice dark blue or something. Type in alien burb. I'll click this text, pull it up on our first viewer so you can see that there. And then coming out of this text, this gray square, I'm gonna put this into this green triangle coming into the tracker. And then inside the tracker selected, I'm gonna come over here to operation and change this from none to match move. And here, even if I don't change anything now, you'll see if I scrub, this text is just sticking over to this bird. And if we wanna change the position, we can go into that text node and move it around here, pull down the size or change this any way I want to. I could even go back in, create a little arrow pointing up on him. So I'll bring him down under here. So now as this beast flies through the air, he has a nice little label to let you know it's an alien burb. And this is a great segue into another quick segment of, I already have a video about that. Shaky text is super popular in these videos as well. And I have a video with several more custom presets for shaky text. They're presets that you can drag right onto a timeline if you want to remain stationary, or you could track them using this method. And finally, we're going to create a nice Mimi glowing eye effect. We are gonna use a clean version of this clip we used earlier, and I'm gonna click this button to go back to the Fusion page. And then we're gonna come up and instead of the media pool, we're gonna click this effects library button. And we're gonna navigate here down to templates and lens flares. We are just gonna be looking at one of the included templates for lens flares in Fusion. But Fusion does come with an entire library of effects and presets and templates that you can drop right into your projects. And more importantly, you can see exactly how all of these effects and templates and generators and particle systems were built. So you can teach yourself the Fusion page. I have two videos about this, one that walks through every free effect included in Resolve and another that walks through the process of how you can tear one down after the fact to learn from it. Links to those will be in the description. But we're gonna come over here and with our first median selected, we are gonna click this lens flare eight. And we're not gonna use this as is, we're gonna modify it a little bit. And with that selected, we're gonna modify it over here in the inspector. First, just to get us started, I'm going to navigate this, drop it right over this eye and I'm gonna come down and pull down secondary strength. That will eliminate this little copy down here. We don't want that. And I'm gonna come over to this L3 as well, uncheck these boxes. So we are just dealing with this main flare. And then I'm going to come over to radial, come down to radial repeat and drop this from four to two. And here you'll see, we just have this line across. But if we want this super typical red glowing eyes, we need to come over to color. And what I'm gonna do is one at a time, I'm gonna go to blue and then green, I'm gonna check blue. And then I'm just, 
and I'm gonna select all of these dots here and just delete them, except for this last one. I'm gonna leave that, even maybe pull it up a little bit. Do the same with green. Pull this last green node back down a little bit. And you'll see, if I click to get rid of that, this is giving us nice flare, but you can still see a lot of the footage behind that. So with the flare selected, I'm gonna come into this mix and just ramp this up, pull this back so that the center just becomes this solid white as well. And I'll even go back to red and pull this up a little bit. And then we can go back to our major hotspot controls. I recognize I am soaring through these specific effects, but really these are all things that you can tweak to find the perfect setting for you. But with this selected, I'm even gonna pull down this hotspot size a little bit and pull up this aspect so that it is not quite as stretched out. I'll get this just a little above this eye, click off to see what that looks like, that's close. So I'm just gonna take that copy and paste it and that second version I'm gonna swap over to this other eye. And if I click off that or click this in, you'll see that that doesn't look too bad on the still. But if we want this to track to the motion at all, we can do that with a tracker that we've used on our tracking the text, but we will implement it in a little bit of a different way. So follow along. I'm going to create a tracker node, pull the output of our media in into that, and then pull that up on the viewer. I'll pull this first tracker down onto this eye, and then I'm actually gonna create a second tracker as well onto my other eye, and then I'm going to do what I did earlier. I will track forward. And actually, you saw I blinked once and it flickered a bit, so I'm gonna come down to adaptive mode, best match, and I'm going to retrack that. It will give us a little bit of a smoother track and then go to that same point and track backwards. And you'll see just quickly scrubbing through that that did all right. So now we can come down to our first lens flare over this, my right eye. I'm gonna come down to primary center, right click, go to remove publish, and then right click again and go to connect to tracker one path position. And then I'm gonna do that on this second lens flare as well. Remove this publish and then go to connect to tracker to path. And you'll see we have been viewing this tracker node. You'll see that I clicked two to bring that up to toggle it in the second window, but we still have controls are visible even if we aren't previewing that node. But now if we go back to our final project and pull that up in our second viewer, you'll see that we have those eyes. But now if we scrub, those glowing eyes will actually be tracked to where that tracker positioned over our eyes please consider subscribing. Thanks. I'll see you next time. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. We touched on lots of different things and we touched on some of them pretty quickly. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll definitely be hanging out there answering some of your questions. And like I touched on several times in the video, I have created a number of tutorials and presets before. So I highly encourage you, if you're interested in any of this, if you're interested in video editing or creating your own content or DaVinci Resolve, I encourage you to check out my channel, see all the other resources I have there. And I know the world of memes is large. So if there are any other specific effects you want me to create tutorials for, leave a comment below. Thanks, I'll see you next time.